Asante, welcome. Asante sana. Uh, guys, to see former Simba's coach for many years. Eh? <laughs> Chokat. <laughs> yeah, he's a level three accredited coach, second in Kenya. I think to uh, say Kenya, second in Africa, like in to see in the South Africa. Indio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Karibu Sana TC as you take us through learning. That's uh, coming. Okay. Uh thank you, Malik, for those very kind words. <laughs> uh I trust everyone can hear me clearly. Yeah, clear to see. Can hear you. Okay. Um, so, uh, first of all, it's been a tough week for rugby after the loss of our good uh, colleague, Makaka. Um, I don't know, Malik, if it's okay. We just observe a small period of uh, silence, maybe just like 15 seconds. You can do that, to see. Okay. Uh, Jets, we can start now. Moment of silence for Alan Makaka, the late. Sao Sao, Santeni Sana. So, um, yeah. Uh, Ladies and gents, uh, basically Malik asked me to just speak a bit about planning and you know just um, share a few ideas and suggestions. I'm sure everyone uh, does their own planning and basically this is just to have some suggestions and discuss here what planning means for us. Um, as you can see by the clip, when you plan and you win, then you can always say everything went according to plan. You can't see, you're not sharing your screen. Oh, I, you can't see? No. Oh, okay, hold on one second. Yeah. Can you see it now? Yeah, it's showing yes. Unanza. Ah, ah, okay, yes. okay, Wond wonderful, wonderful. Okay, so I'll have to start from scratch, right? Yeah, it's okay. Okay. So as you can see, guys, when you succeed, it's not always uh, just one thing, but a lot of it comes through planning. Okay, and everyone is always happy when uh, you win. And you can always say, and a lot of us do say that everything went according to plan. Okay, and it's not just by accident that we all say that. So I guess all of us know what planning is, but uh, I thought maybe I could just share a bit on some of the perspectives and ideas of what planning is. Um, the most important one, I think there comes with the first one. It's about your organized thoughts on how to tackle a future challenge. So you're sitting before, you know what you want to achieve in the future, but you have to, and you have ideas about how to do it, but you need to organize your thoughts in such a format that you can follow. So I'll just try and play a clip here. And then uh, we'll follow on that. So then one second. Yeah, these things tend to fail when you expect them to work. I could have sworn this thing was working perfectly a few minutes ago. <laughs> I 
Okay, doesn't matter. We will just uh, proceed. So basically, why plan? Of course, one of the main things is you want to communicate a message. If you have a clear objective, you want to communicate what your objective is, and sometimes by just speaking it, it might not come out clearly. When you plan, it makes it easy for guys to, vis to see it on paper or to visualize exactly where you're taking them through. Okay, let's see if we can get that clip going. Huh? There we go. Are you able to see that? No, we are on the first slide. Oh, okay. You, 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 you might have to share your screen again onto the browser. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's not showing the presentation. It's not showing it, huh? Okay. Let me stop sharing that. Share screen. Start from the beginning. There we go. Okay, it's showing now. Okay. Do you guys like the music? <laughs> I was about to ask the to have sound. Huh? There's no sound. Oh, there's no sound. It's okay. Okay, so I guess we generally get the idea that a lot can go wrong if you don't plan. Okay. So we just go back to, just go back to this. Okay. For you to understand also what's the full scope at hand. When you have an objective, it's easier to understand what is really required to achieve it when you plan towards it. Because then you're able to analyze and know what kind of level of resources you require, what kind of personnel you require, what needs to be done. Secondly, it's efficient use of resources. Resources will be put to the exact place that it's required, rather than uh, wasting resources and putting things in where they're not required gives you an organized approach. So day by day, you know where you stopped, you know where you're going to start the next day, you know what has been achieved, what hasn't been achieved, you know what's working, what's not working, you're able to fit in people to take to certain tasks in an organized fashion. It makes sure your team, and in this case, not your just your players or your management, but everybody involved, is working towards achieving the goals. And the objective. You're able to identify threats and challenges that might be hidden and not clear from the beginning. Um, there's so many tools out there that you're able to help you in management or in uh, planning or strategy. And when you have a clear plan, it's easier to apply some of those tools because they require sort of uh, certain applications and so on. Key thing when you have a plan, it keeps you very focused. You know exactly what.
what you're doing, and why you're doing it. And one of the important things, you are able to get to the details of everything that you're doing. Maybe I'll play this later. Or tell me if you can see this. Can you see this? Yes, we can see that one. Okay. I just started over here. You can't hear what he's saying, uh, Charles. Well, you can't hear what he's saying. Oh, my goodness. Okay, I'm sorry about that. But basically, um, what he's talk, talking about is basically saying it's important to plan. I'll figure out how to share that shortly. Yeah? But meanwhile, let's, uh, let's, let's move on. But basically saying the most important thing in terms of preparing for the season, or applying for the season, is having a plan. Once you have that right, everything else works out. Okay, so some of the key things about uh, planning. Okay, certain steps that you must follow and try and understand what you're doing in terms of your plan. So there's the where. So the where can be split into two, two issues. Of course, is where your plan is, is supposed to come into effect. But what I'm going to talk about is basically, where's the best place for you to sit and do a plan? If you take it seriously, you want to be focused, go and first of all, try and find a quiet place with your team, with the guys who are involved, to be able to click, think clearly, calmly and stay focused. Depending on how elaborate you want your plan it might take a couple of days so you must consider availability of the venue where you want to do your plan the convenience the comfort and also does it cater for your needs during that period it has to be well equipped so that you can uh, you can do exactly the kind of plan you want with the audio visual equipment facilities a comfortable sitting areas um, you don't want to be in a cramped up place with hard benches trying to plan because your focus will now shift to, I really should be going home now. Uh, always set a preliminary planning stage where your best key of your plan is going to be. Okay, this just sets out a clear environment for you to work. Don't try and be in your normal working area because you get too comfortable. Try and be in a place that it's different so that you can think outside the box. When do I start? More often than not, we tend to wait until we're caught up and realize that, damn, I have something I have to do. Let me start planning now when it's a little bit too late. If you're working on continuous projects, it's always better once you've achieved one objective, you start your planning within that so that you have a transition period. So say for the season, before the competition is over, you might, start, start, uh, you might want to start thinking about your plan for the next season. Allow yourself time to understand the objective so that you can structure how you're going to uh, prepare your plan, okay? But nonetheless, never stop planning. Keep planning throughout. So, who's responsible for planning? Okay, of course, there's you who's assigned the responsibility of the objective. Whether you're the head coach, whether you're the head of a project, okay, whether you're the SNC, you also have an objective. It's important that the moment you're aware and clear about your objective, and you're the person in charge, then you'll be the one responsible for it. Okay. Sometimes, uh, you might be uh, a team leader, okay? And you might be responsible for that task, but you might also want to delegate a few of the tasks. So those are the other people who can uh, be responsible in terms of planning. Importantly, guys, um, it's always 
you must include the people who you expect to participate in the plan. Okay? Let them start from the beginning. Do not bring them later when it's already done. Okay? You have to get buy-in. So the earlier you bring in the guys, the better it is. Okay? You must also be aware of external uh, influencers. Yeah, people who may not be exactly around you. Uh, immediately around you, but you must consider them. You must uh, try and incorporate consultants and experts to help you prepare a plan that will basically be uh, effective for your for your for your program, whatever your objective you want. TC Pole, there is yeah. TC Pole, yes. there is interference uh, at your end. We can't I hear can. you clearly. It's like you are very far away. What about now? Better, Kabisa, perfect. That's okay. Yeah, Kabisa. Okay, great. Okay. Always try and incorporate people who have significant impact on the implementation of your plan. Okay, it's important you identify who those people could be. Try and have them buy into your plan. If you're in a club and you're a coach or team manager, do not prepare a plan just solely and assume that I only need to discuss this with my coaches, uh, with my director of rugby. Please consider the other people who might affect your plan. Okay, try and bring them in. It could be your club chairman, it could be uh, your sponsor, for instance, who will have influence on the resources. Try and see how you can bring them in. Okay, ensure to get buy-in from all the parties interested. Okay, the various ways of doing your plans, but I just uh, detail just a few here. So the first thing you must have a very, very clear objective, take time to understand it and ask yourself the hard question. Before you even embark on anything, do you believe in the objective? Okay, if you do not believe in the objective, whether it's set by somebody else or yourself, then it's unlikely that you will come up with a plan that will help you get to the objective. Engage the various stakeholders. Okay, like I just mentioned earlier. Goal set. Basically, we're talking about you have your long-term plan, but set little goals, little things that you know that will guide you and keep you in track of the ultimate uh, objective. Just the little things that need to be achieved in the short term. Identify the things that need to be done. Always start from a place where you know what has happened previously. Always look back so that you don't make the same mistakes or you build up on something that was strong. If, you're, if you've come from a successive, successful season, it's always good to look back and see what did you do during that time that, was, that led to your success and what can you keep or build on. Do a lot of research from everywhere. Don't just uh, stick to researching in rugby. Go to other sports, go to other fields. Find out what people are doing that is giving them success. You can categorize your plan. You can have strategic, tactical, and operational, and a review plan. Basically, I'll get into those later. Let's give you a brief, okay? One of the important things is about periodizing your plan. Put it in periods so that you're able to have goals and to be able to track. Okay, you can do the overall plan can be one year, then you break it down into shorter terms in terms of months and then weeks. And that way, you're able to intervene in case there's something that uh, goes wrong. Okay, you're able to keep track, you're able to fix an issue. If you've run short of resources, you're able to identify that earlier on. Always document your plan, chart everything that you're doing. It's easier so that in case you need to share it with people, they can see it and understand it clearly. Capture every detail. Do not leave things out, no matter how detailed, how small they might seem or ineffective. Okay? The you see, the interference is bad. Okay. What about now? You are clear, but there's some noise behind. 
Okay, I can't hear the noise. So what kind of noise is it? Nikama radio or TV. Ah, there's no TV or radio here. Okay. Anyway, go on. Sorry, I don't know. Now you're clear. Now I'm clear. You're clear now. Yeah. Okay, I'm not too sure what it is, but uh, okay. Okay, so you had me up to where? Which point did you hear me clearly? Capture all the details. Okay, great. Yeah. So, for instance, the big companies that had um, uh, mothers, recent mothers coming to work, but their productivity was very low. Okay. And when they searched to find out exactly what was causing it, they realized the mothers were always anxious about where their kids, what was happening at home with their babies. So they started baby care. And this helped to ease the mothers and make them a little bit more productive. The same thing should happen for you in sports or whatever project you're running. Try and create an environment that makes everyone comfortable so that they can put the best effort forward. Okay, so do, make sure you cover every detail, even to the pens you're using, everything. Do not, do not ignore uh, small items. So an example. The objective is you want to provide housing for 300 low-income persons. Okay, and this is just a random uh, example. I'm not going into details, but just to give you an idea. So, you want to know what is required. Okay, so the first thing is you have to build low-cost houses, right? The next thing is you have to know where you're going to build them. So you need a piece of land. Are you going to purchase it or are you going to lease it? That also tells on your resources again. Uh, you will need to get the necessary statutory approvals to be able to even start thinking of putting money into it. Who's going to help you? There'll be a contractor, an architect, quantity, uh, quantity surveyor, and so on. Uh, what do you do once you get the approvals and everything? You must design the houses, organize the meetings with your people, with the contractors, with the architects to get everything going. The whole basic view is you have to, whatever you do, there has to be a, a plan, a project, a, a kind of logical step towards what you're trying to achieve with the aim, with the final uh, objective. Some of the skills, uh, skills required, and this is not uh, exhaustive, guys, there are very many more skills, but this is just the general ones, organization. You must be able to put things in order that is logical. That way, everyone is able to follow what you're thinking. Be able to link all parts of your plan seamlessly. Don't have breakages in between, okay? Because that, that creates an issue where you don't have continuity or you might miss something, okay? Provide leadership, yeah, such that you're able to, to get your team to support you and make sure that everyone's playing the roles effectively. Make them believe in what they're doing. One of the key things about leadership is being able to be uh, to inflict a little bit of discipline where required. In rugby, we are very friendly sometimes, but everybody has to be accountable for their role. So it's important that you, as the leader, must be able to ensure that everyone is doing what they're supposed to do. You must be able to motivate your teams, and you must find ways of doing it other than just monetary terms. Okay, you must find other things that motivate your team into. Uh, executing your plan or doing the tasks that will help you execute your plan. Don't be afraid of sharing responsibilities. Always accept that you don't know everything and there's someone out there who might know more within your team. So allow them, allow them an opportunity to also participate and take responsibility for certain aspects of your plan. Okay. It took a while before guys gave SNCs uh, a little bit more uh, roles in terms of uh, training the team, but as you go along, you realize that they're a key part, and they do have something in terms of uh, contributing to the team's success. Okay, make sure you direct everyone. Keep the make sure the jobs that are required are done the right way at the right time, and by the person, right person at the right place. As you set your plan. Be careful not to overextend yourself. Basically, do not make white plans that you cannot achieve. 
if say for instance you're trying to your goal is to qualify for the world cup it might be an idea to think about going beyond that but do not plan to win the world cup when you know you don't have the resources or the ability to to do so because chances are you could run out of resources even before you qualify because your plan is going to be a little bit more than what your objective is and the resources that might be provided to you by either your clubs or let's say uh, the national body might not be adequate to get you there. So always make sure that your plan is within uh, the objective. So let's talk a bit about uh, strategic plans. Just a quick uh, pointer. This is basically how to do things, your strategy in terms of how you're going to approach everything to attain your objective. What projects need to be done um, importantly, you know, it's long-term. Yeah, do analysis beforehand so that you know which areas to improve on. It's important that you set your calendar here, the timelines and everything. Uh, make sure you do your goal setting and also do what is called a balance scorecard so that everyone can be measured by the overall uh, plan. Also here you can identify what needs to be done to get to your plan. Tactical plan, okay? It's small steps and actions that you can do that will give you an advantage, okay? Into uh, achieving your plan. Remember, you're also in competition. So there'll be other guys also planning. But what will give your plan an advantage over the others or help you accelerate achieving most of your goals before everyone else? Okay. What else can you do differently? What innovations can you come up with? Uh, will you go to camps? Will you hire consultants? Will you have a bigger team of, uh, of management to help you through? Okay. Will you build on synergies with other clubs probably who have experience, say international clubs that have experience? What, what, ex what tactical plan do you have? The tactical plan will help you reduce the threats and weaknesses that you that you face within, right? And also, importantly, how do you create a better chance of achieving your goal through research and development? Right. Operation plan. Basically, here we're talking about how things will be done. This is the procedures and guidelines that you'll institute to help guide uh, your strategic plan. Okay. Who needs to do what? When will they, how will they do it? Right. When, it, when will it be done? If it's an SNC, uh, you need the players fit. When will it be done? Who will do it? How will they do it? Okay. You must have a duty rotor so the guys know exactly what is expected of them. You have to have job descriptions for everybody, whether it's the team manager, it's the SNC, whether it's the physio, they must be clear on their tasks and what is expected of them. If it's reports, when do they provide the reports? How do they prepare the reports? When do you have your meetings? All this has to be captured under the operational plan. Set KPIs to ensure that you're in direct uh, target towards achieving your objective and making sure that you stick to the plan, okay? Jen, so far so good? Yeah, Charles, um, do you think maybe at the end you could share us a sample of your balance scorecard? Okay, I'll look for that, yeah. I'm not sure, is that Jason, right? Yes. Okay, I'll try and look for it. Right. Okay. I, I can share one if you don't mind. Okay, fantastic. Okay, always have a review plan to assess whether you're headed towards the right direction, to measure whether what you have done is ideal. Have targets, prepare appraisals for your staff, do assessment tests, and where required, make sure you can do modifications or adjustments. Okay, this will help you either increase your resources if required, or redirect them towards something else. Okay, always zoom in, basically meaning if you have a goal you set 
say in your pre-season, zoom in quickly, have a quick look and see that you're on track. If you feel you're not on track, you can zoom out and say, okay, guys, we need to review this and readjust. So generally, um, I just want to, these are just some of the steps, not all of them, but just um, a few of the key ones. Of course, we've talked about the objective, right? Now, question is who sets the objective? It's important that the objective is for the club, okay, or your team, right? Not your own personal objective. You can always have your own personal objective, but look at the overall objective in this case, right? Look at the time frame that you have for the objective. If it's five years, three years, a season. Okay, identify the period. So, for instance, um, if you want to qualify for the Olympics in terms of period, then you know you have four years to qualify for the Olympics. Okay, if it's a referee who wants to referee in the World Cup, he knows he has four years. If it's a <laughs> coach in the All Blacks, well, you can decide how many years you, you want to plan for that, okay? Right? So be aware of your objective and the period required, and then plan accordingly, okay? Set the goals. They can be several over the period. Break them down, okay, to simpler uh, steps so that they can guide you towards the overall objective, okay? Set tools to measure if you're on track, as discussed before. And make sure they're smart, okay? You don't want to set goals that you can't measure, okay, and are not real and are not timely, right? The key thing is to set a plan to achieve the objective. So this is a, a bit of tips or just a, some suggestions I will share. So you can break down your overall plan, basically, for ease of managing into three categories, right? You can do it for the performance, administration, and management. So performance basically would cover what happens on the field. Okay, your SNC programs, your training plans, that's your session plans, your instruments for analysis, the team selection, okay? There's the administrative part. Basically, this is what it helps you uh, helps the performance part. Equipment management, player welfare, team management, which is very broad, okay, in terms of having uh, bonding sessions, talks, discipline, uh, key things like logistics and requisitions that are required from time to time. And it's, it's, it's a whole list of things that are required. So this is just a few of them. Management, basically this will cover what needs to be put in place to ensure the above two items run smoothly. Staffing, budgets, okay, must do budgets. Medical insurance, okay, for us in sports, this is very important. Finances, having in place contracts, put in place performance reviews, and of course, a philosophy. So as you plan your season, Always ensure you understand the season objectives. Try and have a philosophy. Consult widely and be very elaborate in your plan. Basically what we had said earlier, uh, go into detail. Now, so when you start your season planning, where are you? Okay. Try and understand where you are and try and see how to progress from there. There are different tools you can use for this. You can use your team profile where you know your strengths and weaknesses. You can do a game analysis. Okay. You can uh, use the team manager's checklist. You can do player reviews, which you probably would have done at the end of the season. An SNC report for the previous season. A performance review, basically, of your technical team. Did everyone do the job they were supposed to have done at that season? How is the overall club performance in terms of their own uh, books or, okay? Um, and get the fixture so you know where you're at in terms of the season. Set a game plan. Basically now you're doing your goal setting. Okay, set a game plan. You say, 
this is how we want to play. This is what we want to do in certain areas of the pitch. Okay. That will be able to tell at the end of either three games or four games, you'll be able to assess yourself and say, we did not actually play according to plan. And that tells you whether there's something you need to change. Okay, either it's in your sessions, the way you're doing your sessions, maybe they're too many or too few. Okay. Set fitness knows that will guide the NCC to know whether he's on track. Complete your coach's diary, it's available. Please uh, complete that as, as religiously as you can. Prepare a code of conduct, set a budget. This part of setting a budget is not your overall club. It's important that for you, uh, when you prepare your plan, you set your own budget. Okay. Even if you're an individual, it's important you have a budget to know what you, whether you'll be able to acquire some of the stuff that is required for your plan. Prepare performance scorecards. That's basically that's include KPIs. Prepare contracts. Prepare budgets. Players should have contracts. Coaches should have contracts. I don't know if referees have contracts. I don't know if uh, camera men have contracts. No, but basically, a contract guides you to what is expected of you at the bigger picture. So try and have those. Set tasks to be done. You need to prepare a season plan. You need to prepare an CC program. The team manager's checklist. He needs to prepare his checklist. Ensure he has contacts of the players. You as a coach should also have contacts of the players. Um, you should know how many players you have. You should check what equipment is available or in stock. And also your session plans. Obviously, continuously you must review. Do your fitness tests regularly. Do your video analysis, do your budgetary reviews. Don't wait at the end of the year to come and find, oh man, we overshot the budget, or we were short of the budget. But then it's a little bit too late. Okay. Let the team manager prepare reports as regularly as possible. Okay. Use governing body reviews, uh, say union reports, use a disciplinary rule from the union. Tell whether your code of conduct is working. Check a simple thing is just ranking on the table, okay, in certain areas that will then be able to tell you whether you're going to cross with your plan. All right. Match for referees, match official performance reports, and match official development reports. One of the things that perhaps you don't do regularly or probably is not talked much about is uh, transition. What happens when the season is over and preparing the players for what they're about to go to and when they come back in? Or for you, if you're an individual coming out of competition and when you start to prepare for competition. So you have to do season reviews, honest ones, and be honest with yourself in terms of what you've managed to achieve. Player reviews, one on ones, that must be done before they go because then it's fresh in their mind. Of season plans, what are they? What are you going to do with your players? What are you going to do with yourself as an individual? If you're a referee, or if you're a physio, are you just going to relax? Or are you going to improve yourself? Understand new things, come up with new innovations, see what could have done better. Obviously, SNC graphs basically to show how the conditioning was going from the start of the preseason all the way to the end. So I'm going to talk about briefly about periodization, but just before I move on, any 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 comments? Hello? Yeah, I can move on. I guess so. There's no question to stay. Okay. Oh, there's one. Sorry? I have a question on the tools. That there's one question from Ted for, or comment. For planning. Yeah. Tools that you use for planning. Yes, how Ted, we can hear you. Sorry. Uh, how do you review your tools of uh, planning? How do you review? Okay, that's very good. How do you review the tools that review your planning? Your planning. Yes. Is that the question? Well, I guess in terms of 
the view, the tools are more or less set, right? Okay, the tools are more or less set. So the tools will ask you certain things to input, which will guide you on how to do your, your plan. And I'll talk about some of those tools further down. Is that okay, Teddy? Pardon? I, I didn't get the, the response, sorry. Oh, okay. So I'm saying most of the tools are set. Okay. Yes. All right. So basically, what happens is you have to populate them and fill in a few questions here and there, right? Yes. And those will basically guide you on how to view whether your, your plan is on course or not. Yes. Okay. The, so basically, the reason, I, the reason yeah. I'm asking you that is because some some tools that you use for for making your decision or making yeah. your planning yeah. might end up uh, uh, helping you make your decision that may overlap uh, um, and a review from a different tool. For example, you've given us uh, your SNC graphs Right. If, if you go back yes. to the slide of tools, yeah. Please. Uh, forward. No, forward. Okay. Review tools, right? Yeah. Yes. There you go. Like yeah. your your review tools. Like how, how do you how do you um, evaluate yeah. which one is the best tool to use while you're actually setting what your plan is. Actually, uh, carry on, Teddy. Because at some point they'll be interlinked. Like for example, your fit, fitness tests, yeah. your game analysis could be could vary, and uh, they could be different from what the team manager reports would be. So how 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 would you go ahead to actually yeah. analyze the different tools and come out with a, an action plan for your coming? macro cycle or more menstrual cycle. Okay. Thank you. So for instance, when you're preparing your plan from the beginning, okay, you'll identify periods when you want to do your, either apply each and every one of those tools, okay? So say like video analysis is more readily after every match or after training sessions, isn't it? That yes. is on a daily basis, okay? Or regular, more regular than your fitness test. So what happens is, as once you set your plan to when you want to review, that should guide you in which tool you're using at each point. Now, if one or two of the tools conflict in terms of giving you a different report or a saying, uh, you need to review what you've planned, that's what you're saying. Yeah. That's what saying. You then intervene and sit back, take a step back and say, okay, we need to review our plan. So that's where the plan has to be broken down into uh, shorter terms is the long term. You should break it down into periods, which I'll get to in your micro cycle and meso cycle. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Is, is, is that okay? Perfect. Yeah. Okay. okay. So basically, this is what Ted is asking about uh, in general terms, in terms of periodization. Okay. So what, what is it? It's basically dividing your annual training plan, which now for mostly coaches would be um, a season plan into cycle season plan. Okay. Right. So each cycle represents either a phase in your season or a block or a period of training. Can you hear me? Okay. Okay, for example, in your phases, you can have off-season, pre-season, in-season, and post-season. It's basically we're talking about transition. Okay, your blocks could then be part of the phases, okay, the breakdown of the phases. So you can have your general skills and conditioning and specific skills and conditioning in your pre-season. So your pre-season is then divided into two blocks, right? can then have your training periods, so your weekly training sessions, and that would be your micro cycles, basically breaking them into smaller bits. So, Teddy, for each each cycle, you can have goals and targets, okay, which you can then decide on uh, putting specific tests 
tell them to check that you're on target to your overall objective. Yep. Okay. So the goals could be peaks that you, uh, uh, position that you want your players to be in, to pick it in fitness, okay, or achieving a certain skill level, right, or a certain level of intensity. So there are variables in, 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 uh, in the plans that you can manipulate, in the cycles that you can manipulate. It can be the volume of work that they're doing, the intensity in which they're working, what level of pressure you're applying either during the sessions, okay, the complexity of a session, the required physical effort in your session. Okay, so that's just generally what uh, periodization is. So here, if you look, uh, this is just an example, guys. Okay, I'm not, this is a macro cycle. So overall, you have your goal is for one year, and then you break it down into smaller um, phases. Okay, your phases are micro cycle, then smaller blocks, your meso cycles, and then your micro cycles, which generally are either weekly or two weeks, okay. and then your individual sessions, which are probably like one day. Okay, so the meso cycles could be either a month, two months, but not too too long. And, and this would help you in basically just getting a clear plan in what you want to achieve as you go along the year. The important thing, guys, is at the mesocycles or the microcycles that everything must flow logically towards the objective. All right. Can you guys see? This is just a sample I pulled out. It's a bit... Uh, it's very complicated, but it gives you an idea of what you're able to, to capture with that. All right. You can have a very simple one to try and capture all the details you want. You don't have to have all the rules. Okay. But like you can see, the calendar is up there. There we have the calendar, the number of weeks. There are the mesocycles broken into months, starting with the first one here, two, three, four, and so on. That's just a competitive phase and training phases. Okay. So if you start here, you just say this off season, it's pre season, okay, and then competition, right? And then they break it down into what, what they need to do. The T here is just transition from the end of competition going into the off season, the transition we were talking about. Right? So as you can see here, you can vary your intensity depending on what period you're in. Now, there's no set um, standard of this, and you can borrow from anywhere, or sometimes the best thing is to understand what kind of players you have or what kind of individual you are before you, you program your own uh, periodization, people like this, so that you can send when you want to have your own level of intensity high or low, when you want to raise your volume high or low, and any other variable that you can put in. Okay. Here are the pickings. Basically, these are the goals. To see where, what you have achieved at certain periods, you can sort that in and divide it for yourself. Okay. You can decide when you want to do the tests as well. You do your tests, you monitor, and you review. And so on. So you can, you don't have to follow anything standard, but this is just a, an example. Okay, I'll give you another example, a little bit more uh, simplified. Okay, again, calendar, competition phase, the axis. This is the annual plan covered with the micro cycle, which is broken down into phases. Of this is basically your preparation phase and competition phase, and then the periods, okay, meso cycles are broken into your general preparation period. So the general preparation period basically is, is what is expected of you to do as a base, okay? It's time to, either if you want to do hypertrophy or you want to do the basic skills, this is the area that you'll be 
more likely doing that. Specific now, you're getting into strength, getting to more uh, individual roles, specific skills. Okay. So that's why your preseason year is sort of divided. Okay. Don't, don't worry about themes. You can set your own themes on what you want to achieve in each, uh, in each, in each cycle. Okay. Technique and work capacity for this particular one, speed and strength here, okay, and synthesis. And this basically just build the team cohesion. I'll just go back, okay. Okay, and the micro cycles now, looking into weeks. So micro cycles will be basically what we do nowadays, okay. You train on Monday, you train, on, let's say, on Tuesday and Thursday. Okay, so that's your cycle, that one week, All right? So there's a lot to study on this stuff, guys. There's a lot of information out there. But the key thing is do not shy from this. Please uh, use this. This is a very good guide. And you can use this for your essence. You can do his part separately, and you can have his conditioning table like this. You can do your coaching table. Okay. But it just gives you, like we said, clarity and organized progression in your plan towards your objective. Okay, talked about the various tools here. Right. So the key things um, to note, guys, is always, always allow for review and suitable adjustments to your plan. Okay, remember, these are your thoughts for the future. And there's so many uh, dynamics and, and variables that happen as the season goes along. But if you have this plan placed in a logical way, you'll be able to identify where to adjust, okay, where to increase, what to get rid of as you go along, okay, depending on your game plan. Right? If you if you had started off the season with a game plan of using the scrum, for instance, as your main of your tactic, and at some point you realize it's not working. It's important to try, the plan will be able to guide you and say, okay, we can change this and adjust. And adjust and look for something else. When you do your video analysis, when you do your game analysis, you'll be able to tell. Your fitness might actually, just might actually tell you that your players are simply not strong enough to uh, have a strong scrum when they're doing the test. They're not picking enough. So that means you change your program. Okay. And, and many other aspects that you can uh, change as you go along. So conclusion is planning is inevitable. Okay, we've all had this phrase, failing to plan is planning to fail. It's a fact. It is a process. Yeah, give it, take time and give it serious thought. Always go back and look at your plan. Do not shelve it and put it away and say, and tick a box and say, I've done a plan. The more you the more regularly you look at it, the easier it is for you to follow and always keep check. Yeah. There's no limit to how detailed your plan should be, but be comfortable with it. Make sure your, your support team is comfortable with it so that everyone can buy into your plan. Document everything. Even when you're walking and an idea comes to your mind, jot it down and go and top it up to your plan. It's very critical. And like we said, constantly review. Okay, all right. Uh, so basically, that's just it. Just uh, you know, trying to engage a bit on planning, uh, taking your thoughts about why it's important to get uh, this aspect of 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 uh, rugby going. Okay, there are very many other aspects of rugby involved in terms of just general management yeah and but planning is key planning is key so i don't know um any any questions guys you know uh, suggestions remember this it's it's more of a discussion okay no one is coming out of the certificate from here i'm not i'm not that good at the day so yeah any any suggestion discussions can i share something with you guys if you don't mind Please. <laughs> I'll share my screen very quickly if if you allow me. Yeah. Um 
We were talking about, uh, can you see the screen? Yep. Yeah. When I talk about your macro planning, my, I have a, either a discussion or a question that I'm going to ask. And um, this mainly geared towards what's actually happening to the world of rugby when you're having the COVID-19. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have had our transition phase uh, really put upside down where other seasons, I know even in Kenya, you'd have one month uh, of rugby or maybe uh, between four to six, seven weeks. Uh, guys are not uh, doing any rugby and you've, you've actually doubled that to almost uh, 11 to 12 weeks of rugby. So my first question is how, how do you adapt your transitional phase from the last season into the next season? Okay. Yes. And uh, sure. just to share, uh, oh, uh, the, the second bit was to share what, what, what uh, I do with the, with, with the, in France is uh, we have more or less the same, the pre preparatory phase, everything will be in yellow, okay? But you put them in small blocks where we have one, two, three, four, four weeks and we break off over here end of June and you take another four weeks and you break off uh, around August. That we say, and as we said, in every phase, we use a tool to actually measure and review every phase, okay? And uh, I found that quite interesting. And um, the second thing I'd like to share as well is um, the, important, the importance of actually noting down the transitional period and actually writing down what, you, what you're doing, how you're going to do it, okay? And how to, uh, which tool you're going to use to evaluate every, every phase. Mm -hmm. So we've actually broken down into season. That's a transitional season, uh, period between the last season and the pre-season, which is going to be around uh, August, into the first, uh, first block of games. That's around October and uh, November. So in every phase, we actually put a goal of inter-season, a goal of pre-season, a goal of the first block, the second block of games. And how we're going to, what we're going to do to achieve um, the objective in every block, uh, the how in the interseason, the how in the preseason, and the how in the first block, the how in the <laughs> third block, and the tools we're going to use to measure every every <laughs> every phase. So my, my actual challenge was was in in Kenya rugby right now. What 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 can you share with us that can actually help a coach? in this uh, transitional period that is um, quite uh, difficult to manage. Thank you. Hello. 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 Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's, that's, that's a very interesting, uh, very interesting comment, uh, Teddy. Uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm hearing echoes. Uh, is it me? Uh, yeah. So, one of the key areas that, you know, probably we get challenged about is the transition phase. And one of the important things about a transition phase is so that you don't lose too much of the work that was done in the pre previous phase, right? So, you end up finding that a lot of times, okay, there's no transition phase. So, what happens is players come back and start from scratch. And that's why it's important to find out okay. from, from the coaches here exactly what, what do they do to keep the players engaged out of competition in that transition phase. So for now, you're talking about COVID. So the question is, the plans have been thrown awry, right? Are there other ways of engaging yes. the players, engaging the players yes. outside the, the normal channels in terms of uh, keeping the fitness at a certain level, okay? Growing their knowledge and you being able to- How do you uh, evaluate it as well? Exactly, and you being able to evaluate them in terms of what they're doing, okay? Now, a lot of times, uh, <laughs> I remember one of the SNC guys to evaluate players when he couldn't, he couldn't reach them, would ask them to record what they're doing, okay? Um, yeah. And you know, with a time stamp. Okay, so 
the, the various ideas you can come up with to, to try and see what you can gain out of a transition phase, especially one like this that's now, it's, it's uncertain how long it will go for. But I don't know what the other coaches think about. Uh, or, or what they're doing at the moment. Yeah, correct. What are they doing at the moment? Yes. Anybody? Um, yeah, I think, thanks Charles. It was a good, 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 very good session. Um, Teddy, what I've, what I've seen is, uh, obviously with the hustle that's going on now currently in Kenya, it's, it's, it's very hard to get the guys to commit fully to staying conditioned. So, I mean, what we do at the moment is we have guys, uh, we just stay in communication and, and, and the guys will start, start sending clips of them training. So what we've done is we've provided two types of programming. We've provided uh, non-gym related type of programming and then obviously a gym programming for guys that have access to the gym. Although the gyms is now charging nearly double <laughs> during COVID than what they were before. Um, and, and, and what you'll see is the more you talk with the guys, the more they, they, they feel that drive to do something, if that makes sense. Um, so instead of, if, when you have radio silence, they've got no one to talk to. They, they're not thinking about conditioning. But when you're talking with them, you know, on a daily basis or every second day, the, the rugby is in their mind and the conditioning is in their mind. And then even if they do just a little bit of the programming, um, we find that good enough um, because it's, it's, it's better than nothing. Um, it's a unique situation, especially like with, with uh, Charles's planning. Um, it, 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 it's, it's, that's ideal planning that you're doing. Um, but something I found is the, the circumstances with club rugby is a lot different. You know, um, for example, you've got guys depending on each other for transport. So if one guy's late, you've got about five or six guys late. And, and then you've got to adapt your whole program um, on the fly, if that makes sense. Um, so, and then the same applies now with this COVID thing. I think uh, with, uh, with players being scattered, especially the Nairobi-based players, they spread all over. Um, they, the best way is just constant communication and, and, and eventually they start, they start doing their, their, they start thinking rugby or they start thinking conditioning. Um, even if you encourage them to do something other than rugby, you know, encouraging them to go for a swim if they can or go play squash. Um, uh, Malik and I were talking today. We've even got players holding bags of sugar over their head, working on their line-out jumps. <laughs> um, as silly as it sounds, it, it, it's something they can do. Um, you, you know what I mean? Uh, a bag of sugar. No one would have thought of it, you know. But these players are so creative. Um, once you get them to think like a, like, a, like a sportsman, they start finding ways to get things done. Um, even if it's just jumping over a couple of pillows. You know, um, tenderizing your meat with your fist. <laughs> it, it's all forms of activity. And, and while we're going through these tough times, I think anything they can do should be encouraged, if that makes sense. Uh, just to support what uh, Coach uh, Hector is saying is uh, constant communication is for them to keep the discipline, to remember they're supposed to do something each day doesn't mean lifting all the time. You can do bodyweight exercises just to keep the fitness, the transition, so that by the time they come back in, you don't have to go down to the basic thing to start all over again, as in the transition becomes a bit easier. So. Another suggestion I would, uh, I would put out there is uh, what we're doing in Stade Francais is, um, you know, most people will actually focus on uh, the physical side of the, of the resource of a player because you have other resources that a player can give you, not only the physical side, but you have the technical side, uh, tactical side, the strategical side, and the mental uh, resource of a player. So what we're actually trying to do is, um, number one, keep in contact, keep that link, okay, as, uh, as, as, as it's being done. Then number two is actually um, uh, improve game IQ by uh, doing uh, small sessions, small video sessions, like what you're doing right now in groups of, of uh, 10 
where a game can be sent and we we're asking specific questions to specific players like what are they analyzing what are they thinking how best can that be adapted to our games we can even send games that they played uh, six months ago and we're, we're actually trying to to work on the on the game iq of players from a distance and uh, we've actually had very positive fruits where players are actually uh, giving us uh, feedback of actually uh, of of what we really want them to see, you know, and uh, I found I found it very very rich, um, and I would encourage uh, coaches to do try and do things that you you, you would not have time to do during the season, like uh, if you if you didn't have time to create team values in your in your in your team. You can take this time and create uh, team values, like uh, create a WhatsApp group and and respect uh, what what does it mean for the team. Try and try and look for emotions that make guys uh, be together as a team. You know, so this and 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 I, I repeat, we we are not in a in a as um as a science sport, if if I'll say it in English. Infantry say the, the rugby rugby is not um, a, a, an exact science. It is a complex sport with different ways of doing stuff. So whatever you try, um, it will always give you something positive. It will always add value to to what you want to achieve in your in your group. Any, any any further comments? That's 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 a good discussion right there because I guess that's the situation we're all facing right now. And more than anything, it would be good to share experiences here because you can get ideas of how to address the current situation. But one of the important things and the benefits of you having a plan would be to be able to identify where you stopped, okay, and where you're likely to start and what hasn't been done in between. So the various benefits of all, all, all this planning. Any comments, guys? Um, Charles, I think uh, something that's really important to understand also is, um, especially when it comes to, to semi-professional amateur level, is that as much as you plan, plans aren't set in stone. Um, I think it's something I struggled with or struggled to accept when I started coaching um, because I live for planning. Every single session, every minute had to be set aside and, and accounted for. Um, the problem is, or that I had when I, was, when I was younger coming up in the coaching was when things didn't go to plan, I lost my temper. You know, and, and the thing is we need to also accept that, that plans don't always work and sometimes you need to veer off the plan and then come back. Um, and, and that's the great thing of a plan. It's like a spine. You know, you can veer off this off the path, but when you lose your way, you can always head back to the path, which is your plan. Um, and, and that's a big thing that we, we also need to learn to, to understand and, and, and learn to adapt accordingly, if that makes sense. Absolutely. You're absolutely right in terms of um, sometimes they don't work. Okay. Uh, there's no question about that. As you said, it's, it's something you've done beforehand and there's so many variables that come in and make you uh, have to adjust. And the key thing is being able to adjust. And then also, even as you adjust, it's always good to be able to identify with something that will guide you back identify, to, yes. to identify where you are so that you can progress on. Thanks, Jason. That's absolutely and that is why it's important to write, write down that is why it is important to write down your charm of, of, of what you're doing. Yeah, correct, correct. How are we planning to get money for our players? That's part of planning, no? Please help. I can tell you, Jason, it's, it's, it's an absolute headache. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's uh it's 
it's one of those things that are really uh, unfortunate that um, where would you get the money from? The source is also um, saying, look, we're in this situation, so what do we do? There's no money. So you have to look for other avenues, uh, which it's, it's tough, it's tough. Yeah, uh, TC, the, there's, there's an area we've, uh, we've not covered, or, or maybe I, I didn't get it, is how do you share your, your plans? And how do you make uh, people identify to your plans? Or with your plans? I didn't hear you, TC. Hold on, Teddy, just give me a second. Sure. So I think the, the most important part uh, when you're doing your planning is the where, okay? That's, that's I mean, that's one of the important places. So how do, how you come in, you plan, um, and that's why I said, it cannot be just your plan. Okay, so from the onset, you need to, find out who are the guys who are going to have an impact on your plan and involve them from the beginning. Okay. Involve them in the, from the beginning so that they can also contribute to your plan. Okay. And it can be people who are directly involved in, let's say your team. So it can be your assistant coach, your physio, your, your S and C, but you also have to be recognized that the people, outside that who could influence your your plan like let's say if you have a management committee like most of the clubs have okay they give you the objective and say hey we want you to win a kenya cup or we want you to make it to the playoffs of kenya cup now it's important you you involve them in your plan so they know exactly what you're doing and so that they can provide you the resources where do you communicate this uh well, when you go out you look for a place, a quiet space where you can communicate your plan clearly. It has all your visual facilities. You share this. You constantly uh, discuss this with the immediate team. Yeah, and then you share that. Now, um, just looking for the place. Uh, where was it? Okay, okay I'll, I'll just uh, quickly because I can't find it. But in terms of, of, of uh, the tactical, the tactical approach. So you can, your tactical approach will give you an advantage. And, that, and that's where you can have team camps can, uh, to share your plan. You can bring in consultants to help you improve your plan. So in your tactical planning, once you've identified what your plan is, how you communicate it is going to come out here so that it gives you some sort of advantage. All right? Teddy, does that help? All right, thank you. Yes, 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 it does. Thanks.
we have five more minutes. We can, TC can take a few more questions before we call it a good session. Thanks, Teddy. Thanks, guys. Um, Charles, when you get a chance, please remember to send me an example of your balance scorecard, please. Okay, okay, Jason. And, and also the presentation, you see, because we need to load it up for guys yep. to refer to it. Okay, all right. Anyone, any question? Any question apart from planning? But under planning. When are we resuming rugby? <laughs> soon, soon, my friend. Very soon. Very soon. Soon. Yeah. Maybe after Corona. <laughs> Definitely. Yes. I think it will be after September, guys. We hope so. But yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Can't care you build an indoor facility for us to play. <laughs> yeah. Indoor. Yeah, they lots of money, no? <laughs> so, uh, lady and gentlemen, we can call it a session. That's so, uh, Thank you, TC. Once yes, again. That is Anna TZ for your time, for your insight, yes. for your presentation. Santi Sana, Jason, Alex, Akatu, Leonard, Moto, Joseph, Sarah, Teddy, Edgar. Santi Sana for taking it. Yes. yes. Cheers, guys. Thank Next you for Friday. taking time. Yeah. Thank you for taking time to listen to me. Thanks, guys. Yes. Thanks. Have a good weekend. You too. All right. Stay safe.